Yo, hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm good. We're back in our home studio. Yeah, a long time no see. Hey, we've got some new information on that Cooper guy. You know? Dr. Sheldon Cooper? No, not that, not that Cooper guy. Oh. No, D.B. Cooper, the oh, famous hijacker. Oh, that guy. Yeah, you're not going to want to miss this. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And um, we got a comment on a video that we did recently, which was on D.B. Cooper, the famous hijacker who uh, asked for $200,000 and a uh, and four parachutes. Yeah. Why four? I don't know. Yeah. Um, in fact, that video link will come up right above my head right there. And we got a comment about that, Ron, that I thought I wanted to share with you uh, on this. And let me quickly go to it. And that is here. Uh, no, 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 dude. That's old news. This case was solved this week. Done. Over. Google it. That is from Sham D. Crook. <laughs> and I think also known as DB Cooper. Yeah, I think Shamdy's <laughs> middle name is Cranky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. He's so, also been known to say "Get off my lawn." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close the door on your way out. Uh, and here's how I replied: Shamdy Crook, look, look at the date. Look at the date we recorded this. Our episode came out about two weeks ago, before this discovery. Sorry, dude, but we can't go back in time. <laughs> I can go back a little bit. You got a flux. I've got a flux capacitor in the trunk of the Corvette. Really? Yeah. Does that come stock with that? No, I I got it from uh, Doc Brown. Doc Brown, you say? Yeah. Hmm. It was on eBay. So you know. It'd be hard not to buy that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you got that going for you. I got that going for me. Yeah. Which is nice. All right, so. Uh, yeah. S sorry, dude. You know what? Uh, <laughs> well, first he says it's it's solved. Yeah, okay. okay, all right. All right, so let me speak to that. Okay. It, until you have somebody in custody or you've uh, exhumed a body and by DNA got a 100% match or somebody's convicted, it's not solved. FBI, I've, even, I've read the article. I'm pretty sure that he's referencing, referencing and it was determined by a group of private investigators that they had found the real D.B. Cooper. FBI still has not bought off on that. So once the case is closed, then you can consider it solved. Okay, so this story that we referred to comes out of Stockton, California, which is about, I don't know, 45 minutes from Sacramento, where we are. Uh, and it comes from CBS Sacramento, they report that a team of investigators says, says being the operative word there in the sentence, it has cracked a code that shows the infamous hijacker who went by the name of D.B. Cooper is in fact a man who has ties to the Stockton area named Robert Rackstraw. Mm, sounds, okay. sounds fishy to me. Uh, Rackstraw is a former Stockton resident whose family also lived in Calveras County. Mark Zayed is an attorney who represents the team of private investigators working on the cold case. Uh, we showed one of the letters to the former member of Army Intelligence Unit the Robert, that Robert Rackstraw used to belong to, Zayed said. Zayed said the former service member recognized a set of digits in the D.B. Cooper letter as a code he and Rackstraw used in their uh, units. Now check this out. According to uh, the uh, experts here, when they applied the code, new words appeared that investigators say point directly to Rackstraw. It said, FBI, uh, catch me. The SWS, Zayed said, which stood for Special Warfare School, where Rackstraw went to learn coding. Yeah. He's private. a specialist in this. Right. Uh, so the, one of the private investigators, Thomas Colbert, told Seattle that he believes Cooper was a CIA operative 
conclusion made based on the five letters allegedly sent by Cooper. The new decryptions include a dare to agents, directives to apparent uh, partners, and a startling claim that is followed by Rackstraw's own initials. If captured, uh, he expects a get out of jail card from a federal spy agency. It's funny you mention that, see, because Ronnie has given me one of those <laughs> that I carry with me. That in any yours is from a Monopoly set, though, so it doesn't carry quite as much weight as maybe this. But it says right on there, "Get out of jail free." You gave that to me, uh, and I even initialed it. You did, yeah, yeah. It's Cr. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since the day before Thanksgiving in the Lord's year 1971, the mysterious case of the Northwest Orient Airlines hijacker has intrigued, intrigued people around the world. The man who called himself D.B. Cooper showed a flight attendant a bomb in a suitcase, allowed passengers to leave, asked for 200 grand, and four parachutes, and when the plane took off again, jumped out with all that cash strapped to his body, no one found him in all these years. I mean, the odds of these, uh, once this code is applied, actually referring back to Rackstraw, I'd love to play the lotto, the guy says. And I say that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Rackstraw's attorney says his client lives in San Diego now and maintains he's not D.B. Cooper, which is exactly what D.B. Cooper would say. Right. Yes. So it leads me to believe they might be on to the right guy. And so this is the sentence right here, that Ronnie, that I want you to drive us home on because this further illustrates your point. Go yeah. ahead. The FBI issued a statement reading, after this development, they still don't have the evidence to solve this case. To Period. solve. They don't have Google it. it. <laughs> Google it, dude. <laughs> Shandy or whatever. All right. So there you go. There's the latest update on the D.B. Cooper thing. Which do you believe? Is it Walter Recca or is it this Rackshaw guy? Yeah. You know, I, I, again, you would think that in these years of DNA evidence, and you know, Ronnie, this particular show, once we put it up on YouTube, it's there for eternity. Right. Okay, so right now, we're talking to perhaps even generations of future people who will know nothing more than just always having DNA as evidence. Right. Right. So uh, this is at a time when they are they, they weren't in 71. They 71. weren't collecting DNA evidence. No. And we just had an unbelievably historic case solved in Sacramento. Uh, what we used to call the East Area Rapist. Yes. He moved on and made... The Golden State Killer. Golden State Killer, mm -hmm. the Visalia Ransacker. Uh, he had you know, committed dozens and dozens of crimes and murders and uh, burglaries and rapes throughout California. And just until recently, I mean, within the last, what's it been, three months maybe? Yeah. Um, they solved it through a, geano a genealogy uh, a, a DNA website. So, I mean, is it possible that, I mean, if they collected hair off of his seat, possibly, mm -hmm. then they could get DNA off that, mm -hmm. which they could go through like they did with the East Area Rapist, and they went through his garbage once it was pushed out to the curb. Right. They found something. What's the rule on that, Ron, legally? So... Until you push it out to the curb, it's your property. Mm -hmm. Once you push it out to the curb, it becomes property of the city or county. That what you is the in. curb? I don't mean to get too technical. Is it where the concrete stops and the asphalt starts? So it would be wherever wherever it gets collected. When you, once you've pushed it out to where the uh, garbage agency will collect it, at that point, you've lost all interest in whatever the contents are of, of that can. Now, can one go out there and pull something themselves out of their own garbage? Absolutely. Yep. You can, still, you can still pull whatever you want out of there. Anybody can. Okay. Uh, we used to get calls all the time. I push my recycling out to the curb, and there's hobos out there pulling my recycles out. Well, mm -hmm. you know what? Technically, once you've pushed it out there, you've kind of lost interest in it. So, uh, you know, we would tell... We tell them to move on because we don't want, you know, transients and whatever in the neighborhoods because they tend to 
oh, look, shiny object, and they go grab it off your lawn or whatever. Yeah, it is. oh, so, it was in the pile. Yeah, so we don't want people like that running around there, but technically not illegal. Interesting news from the legal standpoint, from that side of the law. Yeah. Corvette Ronnie, retired police officer. Mm -hmm. Mm, and getting more and more retired every day. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that gives us more time to have him here on the program. Bingo. Uh, okay. So that'll wrap up this episode. Thank you very much. If you want to check our sources uh, or, or find out anything more about Ronnie or, or me, uh, you'll find that below in the descriptor. Uh, it's it's all down there, our blogs and our, our social media, et cetera, and, and especially our sponsors. We'd like to thank them. We're welcoming a new sponsor this month in July, uh, YOLO Blacksmith. Ooh. So we'd like to thank Corey. Thank you very much for uh, nice. being a sponsor on our program. When you see these sponsors, uh, please feel free uh, to, to use them uh, for their services or goods, whatever it might be, and uh, tell them that Men Are So Smart sent you, and you won't believe the deal you're going to get, oh, yeah. especially with Capital Mobile Break. Check that out. But you didn't hear it from me, okay? Joel's a good guy. All right. Uh, until the next time. I am Lou Gallagher. I am D.B. Cooper. No, no, Ron, you're Corvette Ronnie. Oh, I'm sorry. I am Corvette Ronnie. And I'm D.B. Cooper. We almost gave it away. Yeah. Who oh, the real D.B. Cooper is. No, we're not the real D.B. Coopers. <laughs> or are we? <laughs> See you next time. Subscribe to our channel. It's Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.